the latest NFL injuries out there, and we start off with a big one. Carson Wentz, he's back, baby. And it's good news because he's been cleared to return. Now, he will start week three against the Indianapolis Colts, and there's been, there's been the back and forth. Oh, when is he going to play? When is he not going to play? And then at some point, I think there were reports that, oh, he might, he might miss several weeks from Ian Rapport, and then all of a sudden they kind of reversed course, and Rapport said this was the plan all along. So you know how those things tend to go. But Carson Wentz will be good to go week three against the Indianapolis Colts. And by the way, Cam, if you're going to pick a player or a team to play in, in the NFL and come back from injury, the Colts secondary is really bad. So I'm quite on board with that decision. I don't know, Tom. The Colts looked pretty darn good against the Redskins yesterday. Eh, they chucked it around quite a bit, though. That's fair. I, I am not concerned about the Colts secondary, especially if I'm the Eagles, even though they have their own receiver concerns, which we'll get to later on in the show as well. All things considered for Carson Wentz, great news mm -hmm. because there were reports out there that maybe, you know, he'd be playing in October. Well, no, that seems to not be the case. He's going to be playing this week for the Philadelphia Eagles. So looking forward to seeing him back on the field. Perhaps mm -hmm. he can build a MVP kind of resume. We shall see how many yards will Carson Wentz have in week three against Indianapolis. Let us know in comments. 269. Of course. <laughs> That's real appropriate, Tom. I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. All right, next I up here, resist. Joe Mixon, running back for the Cincinnati Bengals, expected to be out two to four weeks. Yeah, he underwent a minor knee surgery. Now, the report is that this is just a cleanup procedure for an old injury, nothing to be overly concerned about, but you're still going to miss two to four weeks. And typically when a player has a knee scope procedure, whatever it is, to clean out some extra loose particles, I tend to lead more towards the higher end. Two weeks after a procedure on your knee, I have a tough time seeing that one. So in the meantime, Gio Bernard is your next man up. But Cam, he's not a full-time back. Does Trey Carson get the number two role with some touches? Or does Mark Walton, a guy I like coming out of Miami, get some more rushes? I think Carson makes more sense for the mix and roll. as kind of more of the featured back. Bernard and Walton are both almost scat backs, Cam. You know? Yeah, not the greatest RB depth chart there. So we'll see when Mixon returns, but obviously a very important piece of that mm. offense for Cincinnati, a team that is undefeated, mm. by the way. All right, folks, here on NFL Daily, yes. we are presented by BetDSI. If you want to win easy money, get it done by going to chanceforce.com slash bet. We negotiated a promo code just for you guys. The best deal out there. Yes, Live120 is the code, 120% deposit bonus on that initial deposit, mm -hmm. so get it done today. Put down 100 bucks, they'll give you 120 for free for a grand total of 220 bucks to bet with on, B on BetDSI. Chatsports.com slash bet promo code is Live120. All right, so the Bengals, Tom, played the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday yes, night. CJ Mosley got dinged up in that game. Uh, I will, the Ravens were a disaster for me in fantasy. I cannot believe I let you. I am so sorry, my man. Let me play them, even though it was my idea, and I actually talked you into it. <laughs> um, but I think Mosley going down for what was the first drive on that was a big difference maker. Yeah. Like, they missed him out there. Now, there's no ligament damage. is really good news for TJ Mosley, but his week three status is still unclear. I don't know if he'll actually play. But no ligament damage is a win, relatively speaking. Ravens take on the Broncos this week. All right, next up here, Devontae Freeman could miss multiple weeks, Tom. Is that the latest? Yeah, so the Falcons at first felt confident he was going to play in week two, kind of like how they felt Keanu Neal was okay and Deion right. Jones was okay. And now he missed week two, and he's going to miss two to three weeks in total. Guess what that means, Cam? Tevin Coleman time. Yeah. And Tevin Coleman on only 16 carries was actually pretty darn good against Carolina. He balled out. Now, I don't think you're going to see Atlanta give them the ball 25 times a game. They'll try and get Edo Smith involved like they did in week two. But if you're a Tevin Coleman fantasy owner, you're like, yes, this is exactly why I took him, you know, around RB 30 or 31 right. to be my, you know, backup halfback. And if he gets to start, boom, there you go, RB2 play. Great fan duel play this week, Oh, yes, the way. he is. He's, he's going to get a lot of volume. He was surprisingly cheap. Yep, absolutely. All right, so that's the deal with Tevin Coleman. How about Larry Fitzgerald dealing with a hamstring injury? Steve Wilkes said it was minor, and that's a good thing for Fitz and the Cardinals because they're pretty thin at wide receiver. Mm. Uh, you take a look at their depth chart, and their next best guys are Chad Williams, who's played a lot but hasn't made an impact. Christian Kirk is still coming along. J.J. Nelson, also not great. And Trent Sherfield, like, this is a bad receiver core. Like, this is bad. So, all of a sudden, you don't have Fitz? Which, who are you taking? Cardinals without Fitz or the Bills receiving core right now? 
It's Zay Jones and Probably. Kelvin Benjamin versus Chad Williams and Christian Kirk. At least I have a big time physical receiver in Kelvin Benjamin that I can play with. Uh, you got nothing <laughs> think here, you Tom. Can, you can think you can play with Kelvin Benjamin. At least you got Christian Kirk. But overall, you better hope Fitz comes back because that Cardinals offense, we'll talk more about Sam Bradford later on in the show, yeah. has, a disaster, is a, has been a disaster so far. Speaking of the Bills, LaShawn McCoy has a cracked rib cartilage going on right now. And what's the latest with him? I'm confused by it because there was the initial report of, oh, he has a fractured rib. And then it was, oh, just kidding, there is no fractured rib. Oh, he has a cracked rib, he has cracked rib cartilage. <laughs> so it's a rib injury. And I guess it was heavily bruised, and they couldn't figure out exactly what it was, which mm. is just so strange to me. But if you're the Bills, I think what you actually should try to do is I think you should give McCoy the week off, bring him back once he's healthy, and do your best to showcase him for a trade deadline. You're not trying to go to the playoffs. You're not going to the playoffs. You're quite a, w a ways away. Trade McCoy to a, a team that needs a halfback. If someone else gets hurt, I think that makes a lot of sense. All That's right. my mindset. Are we in? Will Buffalo win a game territory? I think they'll win a game, but it's not going to be a pretty win because that offense is bad right now. It's a real bad Listen offense. Listen to this schedule, guys. Mm -hmm. Minnesota, Green Bay, Tennessee, Houston, Indianapolis, New England, Chicago, maybe Indy. They can get a victory there. Okay. Jets or Dolphins? Jets maybe after that. The Jets Jags. or Dolphins will come back down to earth. I think that's a possibility. I'm thinking 1-15, in 2-14. and 14. They'll win a game. Maybe three. Maybe three. Trying to be stretching. nice, Bills fans. Trying to be nice. <laughs> Delvin Cook suffered a big-time injury last year. He's back this year healthy, you would think, except he has this hamstring injury going on right now. Well, he said it was only cramping, which okay. at, the, at time it kind of freaked out the Vikings and their fans, but I think he'll be okay. I think he'll be good to go in week three. Do monitor that going forward if he's on your fantasy team because even if it's cramps, I don't trust hamstrings. Like Those tend to linger and hang around and pop back up, so just be a little bit concerned about that and at least monitor it going forward there. Okay, so that's the latest with Dalvin Cook. How about Cam Robinson with the Jaguars, Tom? He's done for the year. This is a big blow for Jacksonville. He suffered a torn ACL. It ends his season. And now the Jacks have a bit of a question mark on the offensive line. Now, Andrew Norwell and Brandon Linder are good on the left side, but Josh Wells is the next man up at left tackle. They do have Will Richardson, who I guess will now become the swing tackle. A.J. Can, Jeremy Parnell. Let's see how they fare without Robinson. Now, he hasn't been elite necessarily by any means, but I think he's a good, young, talented player. But losing Cam Robinson, I think, is, is a pretty big blow overall for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Absolutely. B big blow. The interior of that offensive line is good, but the tackles now are a little exposed. All right, mm -hmm. so that's Cam Robinson. Next up on the list here, we're going through the latest injuries here on NFL Daily. So Robinson yes. out for the year. Let's talk about John Halapio, who was the... Center for the Giants, and maybe not anymore. Done for the year. Uh, he broke his ankle and his leg, which is just awful. He had an air cast as well, so he is out for the season. And actually, had earned the starting job. The Giants had traded away Brett Jones, and now with, with, with uh, Jalapio out, it's going to be John Greco, who has played kind of all over the line of his NFL career. He is the next man up. All right, the so the Giants, up. an offensive line that looked really bad Awful. last night against the Before Dallas Cowboys. Before they lost their starting center. Right, now they're going to be in really tough shape here. They did sign Nate Solder to a big fat contract, but he's not really panning out to that amount of money so far this season. Mm -hmm. Clothing here at Chat Sports is brought to you by yes. Mizzen and Main. Tom and I are wearing Mizzen and oh, Main yeah. shirts right now. Troy Aikman does it. J.J. Watt does it. Phil Mickelson does it. You can do it, too. Comfortable.af, Tom. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. And, oh, by the way, they're made in America, too, so it's a win-win. There you go. <laughs> Hashtag America. All right, let's continue along here with these injury reports. Mike Wallace out indefinitely for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's what the Eagles are saying, and then there are the media reports that are like, eh, this is probably going to at least maybe end up being season-ending. He broke his leg. I think at minimum what we see the Eagles will do here, Cam, I think they will put Mike Wallace on IR and possibly have him come back later on in the year if they do end up having a situation there. But here's my concern, Cam. Yep. Uh, this, um, this Eagles receiving core, Alshon Jeffrey currently injured, as, of course, we pulled Mike Wallace off that depth chart since he is currently hurt. Kamar Aiken, Nelson Aguilar is good, but Shelton Gibson and then DeAndre Carter, they use Josh Perkins heavily, a tight end. So I would actually be pretty concerned if I'm the, if I'm the Eagles right now because your receiving core is very, very banged up right now. Very banged up. Alshon Jeffrey can never seemingly be healthy, mm -hmm. and I think that's the problem with him, obviously. Kamar Aiken has a very low ceiling. 
And Aguilar's good, but he's a slot mm -hmm. receiver, so we can't, you know, take over a game by, mm -hmm. by, you know, a standard of maybe somebody else out there like a Josh Gordon mm -hmm. with a high ceiling. Yeah. All right, so meanwhile, Des Bryant, he's still out there. He wants to play the Cowboys it makes twice sense. It in makes a sense. season. He can make it happen by joining the Philadelphia Eagles. And Tom, by the way, the Cowboys and the Eagles play later this year, Week 10, Tom. All right, and then Week 14, both those games, primetime games, 425 on Fox and a Sunday night date with the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> um, if I am the Eagles, I'm signing Des Bryant. Because Are you? Because look at that receiving core. Who would you rather have, Kamar Aiken or Des Bryant? Des Bryant. It's a no-brainer, right? You pick Des Bryant. Like, I, I, I don't know why he's having such a hard time getting signed. So I'm kind of reshuffling my top five teams that could oh, sign yeah. Des Bryant. In, in your head right now? In my head, of course. And, of course, New England is still number one. I still think New England will sign Des Bryant. It's going to happen maybe mm -hmm. in October, according to reports and according to sources out there. Number two might have to be Philadelphia because of I think it makes the news sense. with Mike Wallace and I mean, all It makes this. a lot of sense. So I think Philadelphia is at two. Maybe mm -hmm. Houston could be at three, Cleveland four, and then maybe sneak in an Arizona there at number five. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that depth chart not exactly inspiring. Not great by any means. All right, so that is the latest there with Mike Wallace. Let's give another shout-out to BetDSI. Yes. So, we're going to tell you guys how to win some easy money, all right? It's simple. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code when you sign up, Live120, 120% deposit bonus. Use all that money oh, yeah. to bet on the NFL this year. Yeah. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is Live120, 120% deposit bonus. Put down 100 bucks, they'll give you 120 for free for a grand total of 220 bucks to bet with. And you'll win some money on BetDSI. It's Absolutely. not really gambling when you know that you're going to be right. Exactly. Not a gamble at all. All right, let's take a look at Greg Zerline because kickers are important too, Tom. They're people too. They are. And he's on my fantasy team, so he's doubly important to me. <laughs> What's uh, the latest? Groin injury didn't play in week two because of it. The Rams, though, don't plan on placing him on IR. However, they are expected to sign kicker Sam Finken to help fill that gap in the meantime. So Zerline, Greg the leg, has been very good for the Rams, but they should be okay. It is just a kicker in the end, right? Well, they're Tom, people, but they're kickers. There's been a lot of turnover at the kicker position lately. <laughs>